Uh, I know a bit about Overlord. I, it's a game series I always kind of want to get into, and it's kind of how I want to base, uh, well, one of the, or one of the ideas I have for a video game on, if I can ever get it created, it would just be a lot bigger, obviously. Well, with, well, I just keep thinking more and more ideas, but you get the point. Anyway. Have you ever heard of this game? Who, me? Yes. No, I have not. Huh. But yeah, it's basically, you look how... You look like this, and you basically leave a bunch of goblin creatures, I think, called minions. Yeah, there they are. Oh, wow. Yeah. Overlord is a game about, well, being the Overlord. The yeah. premise was that rather than playing the hero, instead you would be playing the villain. So you'd be conquering the world and defeating heroes, much like Dungeon Keeper. You'd also I... be controlling an army of minions like Dungeon Keeper, and also... I don't know what Dungeon Keeper is. I heard they had a reboot of it, and that was terrible, and it was very, uh... It was a phone game that they heavily monetized. But I love the idea of being the overlord and trying to take over the world with a bunch of different, like, creatures and monsters. I wish there were more games like that. Which might mean that I hope I can make a game like that at some point. If I become a rich man. Yeah. Anything otherwise, I'd probably not be able to. To be completely honest. So, Pikmin? Pikmin. Yeah, this is a strange combination. You're playing as Kmart Sauron and control a bunch of colored gremlins. Okay, I like the name Kmart, Sa Kmart Sauron. I'm not sure if Kono knows who Sauron is. Does he? I don't think I do. He's the main bad guy in Lord of the Rings. Oh. Yes. The guy in the giant armor that who has a giant mace. Enough, but there was also talk of it having a morality system, kind of like Fable. I thought it's... that was odd, since I thought you were supposed to be playing as evil incarnate. Yeah, exactly. it is strange. Overlord had both more and a lot less than I expected. So today I'll be covering both the main game and its expansion. Let's fire up a new game and see what it's There is about. actually another game of Overlord. There's Overlord 1 here, Overlord 2. And there's a third one where you... It's more of just a multiplayer top-down game. Oh, okay. I've never played any of them, but I've kind of always wanted to, though I never got the chance. Rub some acid in his eyes. Oh. Oh. I do like his design, though. Hmm. All right, now you're all caught up been awoken by creatures called minions to replace okay. the previous overlord. The minions are only happy when they have a new evil leader to follow. Okay. Yes. I know. <laughs> Dear God, I, do, I just want to forget those minions. Does anyone else in chat just want to forget those at this point? Because they've gotten to the point of being super annoying. Mm, not that I know of. Mm, let's see what chat has to say. Or the comments. Anyway. Your evil tower and rule once more. And that's it. Let's look okay. at the visuals. As far as technical graphics go, this game has really bad bloom. Sometimes it looks oh, like yeah. it, it usually looks like the surface of Venus. For some reason, a lot of Xbox, uh, like Xbox 360 titles had this problem with bloom, and I don't know why. I think it's because they thought bloom just made everything look better. Or yeah. just, or it could be a technical bug. I don't know why. I usually don't mind when games have a bit of bloom, since it can look nice, but they mm. way, way overdid it in Overlord. Save your eyeballs and turn that off. Thank you for the rain, Georgie! Corgi, as you said before, you can always join in here. Yes, I do have a friend who is a Corgi Demon Lord. It's also great to see you back streaming again, my friend. I hope your YouTube videos are doing well as always. For those who don't know, Jorgi likes to talk about Monster Girls card games and Monster Girl card games. But yes, 
go check out his stuff if you can. The, that probably didn't show him the best, but uh, <laughs> thank you for the resub, Jordan. So no matter what you no matter if you'll always be a raccoon. Why a raccoon? But thank you for the resub, mm -hmm. Jorgie. It means a lot. But yes, we have a Twitch, guys. So if you want our stuff, you can probably check that out. Man. Funny enough, the, usually the people that raid me are the people I'm working great, on their stream. It's really impressive considering it's an early 7th gen title. Once I got the bloom off, everything was a lot sharper and clearer than I was expecting. Oh my god, this looks a hundred times better without the bloom. What the hell? Expecting. It does have some quirks, like the draw distance can be very low. I need to move myself areas. over just a bit. A few are hazy to try and disguise it, but it doesn't work that well. This is the only thing that really stuck out to me as far as showing its age okay. goes. Seeing as how it's nearly 12 now, that's pretty impressive. It still looks pretty good. to hold up as well as it does. Honestly, some... Th here's the thing. If you try and make things more realistic, especially back then, it looks worse. Especially now when things get even more high graphical. But if you go stylized, it always looks better. Regardless, the art direction of the world is very lush and detailed. From oh. dark woods to castles to graveyards to mines, it's all filled out very nicely. Nice. Even simple pathways usually had enough adornments to keep them interesting. Unfortunately, while you can do that a bit in the desert, it's still going to be a desert. I don't know, I'm no. not feeling very captivated by this. I mean, the setting is a parody of fantasy, so you don't desert. expect very inspired enemies. In fact, from a visual standpoint, there's very little original about Overlord. Which, mm. I get, is the point. What does stick out is your horde of minions. Rather than being simple recolors, they look like distinct subspecies. Cool. For example, brown minions are your regular goblin gremlin things. <laughs> so they're just <laughs> long-eared little goblins. <laughs> then you have your blue minions, who are aquatic. So blues are covered in scales and have webbed hands and feet. Instead of just being a blue goblin, they look more appropriate for their environment. The minions are all like this, and they have a lot of character. Cool. It never got old for me watching them smash everything up and have little celebrations <laughs> when they find stuff. Sending them out to dogpile some Mensa troll who thought he could just walk around in the elven forest. <laughs> They're so well animated and have so much energy. You really get the sense of having a ball of chaos follow you wherever you go. That is a they nice feeling. They go crazy. The back on the menu, boys. Most so evil Pikmin. That is, is what he... Serviceable. He there did aren't... mention Pikmin early on, yes. No low quality or poor sound effects, but nothing really stand out either. Yeah, I need to I move mean, myself I slightly. Like I never sounds. realized how long this model's here is. So it covers a lot more than I realized. I have similar feelings about the music. Hmm. It's similar to the visual design in that it's what you'd expect. Oh. Yeah, nothing too outstanding for music. That's a nice little flute, though. I mean, you're not going to this game expecting, like, high-flying music, to be honest. Most of it is very generic. The important mm. thing is that it's not grating. And I don't think they're all like this, as the game does have a few standout tracks. The main theme is great. Okay. Oh! Yeah, that actually is pretty good. Looks like an evil succubus queen of some kind. But I do always like games where you're leading an army, actually. Like, leading from the front, not just, you know, controlling them from the top-down view. I know it's a very rare type of game style, but I still love it. Oh, killing a bunch of zombies. Hmm. Not bad music overall. Oh, he looks more thorny here. And more haunting music. The composers are definitely capable of making very standout music, so I can only speculate that they were told to tone it down for the other areas. Guess In comparison, so. the voice acting is a complete coin flip. Hmm. You have characters like Gnarl the Head Minion, whose delivery completely knocks it out of the park. Oh, Any nice. leafy canopies and sun deviled pools. <laughs> now, it is dank, dark, corrupted. Ooh, I like oh. what they've done with the place. Ooh. Oh, I'm dancing. I'm actually dancing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm then dancing. Statue's gone. I told you lot to hurry up, fools. We're meant to be the thieves, and look, those rock huggers have got here first. 
Yeah, she's Let's not doing her best. Call the overseer. You, I know you. You took her away from me. What the you hell? Make Khan angry. <laughs> what the hell is that act voice here. acting? Why fight when you can pay others to do it for you? Everyone has a price. You might be thinking oh the God. same thing I was. Is this another joke from the game? Have all the yeah. enemies of the Overlord read their lines really awkwardly. It's a funny mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. But I don't think that's the case because they're not all like that. Really? Didn't we leave you for dead in that godforsaken tower? Oh. You certainly should not be turning up at my party uninvited and oh outing the dress code. He does have the voice of, uh, you know the voice coming. Oh ho. Oh ho. Ho ho. Oh ho. Let me go. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I work for? I was actually cares. so curious about this that <laughs> I looked it up. A lot of the voice cast in the Overlord only appeared in Overlord, and maybe one or a few other things. So it looks like one of them was trying, or a few of them were trying, and a few of them aren't, weren't. So you have a, a range of French. both professional voice actors and some people whose literally first major project is this game. Ah. So yeah, that definitely explains it. Yeah. Let's talk about the gameplay. Yeah. To control the land, you must master your slaves. You start out small, only being able to control five browns. By the Makes end, sense. you can be controlling 50. Oh. So in fact, you have four types of minions now. As I mentioned before, the browns are your big biting fist. You point and they try to make the bad thing go away. Minions Makes sometimes sense. find stuff when you point. It could be health and mana potions to recharge you. It could be the life force of slain victims. You need that for more minions. It cool. could be a lot of gold. You need a good amount of that for upgrading stuff. Or get a lot of it and do nothing with it. Do now nothing you're with learning. It. <laughs> do nothing with it. Sometimes minions find stuff for themselves. It could be armor, weapons, just trash. No oh, that is actually really cool. They upgrade themselves as they get more stuff. That's a nice little bit of detail. What, it makes them better fighters and can also give them a sense of style. Oh, but <laughs> they're wearing a bunch of top hats. For everyone. All of your minions, regardless of color or character, can do all mm -hmm. these things. Browns cool. can just equip more stuff and last longer in a fight. Your red minions throw fireballs. If you rally them on a point, they'll zap anybody who walks by. Oh, so they're mostly your ranged uh, attackers. Alright, nothing too bad there. Of course, being immune to fire themselves also means that they can move it out of the way. Greens okay. are your little dickish rogues. They're good for getting rid of poison. The green oh. goblins also cloak when rallied because they like ambushing their prey. They also like ruining Peter Parker's Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh my god, really? <laughs> you, uh... You, you have to have gotten that joke, Chrono. Uh. <laughs> mm. Chrono, I think, is not really here. Chrono might be dead. We'll have to deal with him later. Um, I'm here and there. I'm all over the place. Hmm. Anyway, I continue to Terrible fighters, but can cross water. You're oh. also your medics, being able to revive dead minions. Oh, nice. If you have a body. That doesn't always happen. Oh! Oh, dear God. Sandworm. With little followers, there's a lot of room for strategy and different approaches, right? Mm. Figuring out where to position everybody, deciding which minions to bring for a job, all that good stuff. Yeah. Well, in most cases, the effective solution is point at the thing and watch it die. Oh, well, that stinks. Not much strategy there. Oh. I prefer to lead from the front if you're an evil overlord kind of thing. Yeah. There are probably a few reasons for this. First, the controls. I've played this game both with a controller and with a keyboard and mouse. Mm -hmm. With a controller, you can directly move your followers with the left stick. You control Kmart Sauron with the right one. This lets the player move both the horde and the big boy completely independently from each other if needed. Interesting. This also means relying on the game's fixed camera more since there's no stick for it. Oh. The camera control comes from using the left bumper to snap it behind the overlord. This can make some turns awkward. It's something that never stops feeling clumsy. Alternatively, you can tap a stick to give an overhead view. This mm. could work, except the camera will collide into things a lot. Oh, It'll no. Just be walking in surprise close-up. In a lot of indoor areas, it'll barely angle up a bit, then gets pushed down. When that angle is working, though, it almost seems more natural. It oh, also maybe it's more like this. Maybe so that was the original intended idea. You control the game more like an RTS or an ARPG. Well, no. With a mouse, you now have full control of the camera. After okay. playing with a controller, it actually takes some getting used to. The issue now is that a lot of your minion controls will now lock the camera. When that happened before, it was all I knew. Now it feels like control is being ripped away, especially when you're moving your horde. Mm. You need to hold both your mouse buttons and then drag your mouse around where you want them to go. 
It's incredibly awkward to do. Yeah. These guys have to go far sometimes. There are puzzles that are already janky enough using a stick. You might not have enough desk for mouse controls. Remember, you oh. still get full camera control and trade-off. Mm. I guess it could have been a lot worse, like tapping num keys or something. At the end of the day, I believe a controller is the way to go. Which means moving yourself and your minions on the same two sticks with very limited camera control. Playing more strategically is cumbersome. You select your guys, manually wrangle them over, place a rally point, do the same with the next, and then you have to... Ah! Oh! Alright, kill everything. Uh, this isn't Men of War 2. This game is for dicking around. I don't know what Men of War... I've never heard of the game Men of War, but... Uh, yeah, this game is not for strategic play. It's for puzzles and then attacking. What the hell? The game is in a weird area where it seems like you can do a lot more than you actually can. Most of the time the game is just reveling in all the chaos it can cause. At the same time, there will be a lot of environmental obstacles, so you want a balanced group in case some of them die off. The world yeah. has upgrades, treasure, and spells, but you need minions to carry them. This usually means you'll have to escort them to a safe place, since if they get too far away, they might not find their way back. Plus, certain objects can only be reached by certain minions, which, once again, encourages hmm. having a balanced party. Yeah. It's kind of incredible just Some how part, much right? time you spend watching stuff being carried in this game. Especially if you do optional missions or look for upgrades. Ooh. I was never thinking, oh. what would be a fun team to have? It was, what kind of minions might I need to carry something? Or remove an obstacle that has something I need to carry. For all the mischief an army of goblins could be causing, the game rarely has anything fun as an obstacle. The yeah, it seems like they're just mainly carrying a bunch of stuff around, honestly, or attacking things. That seems to be their main two objectives. Make sure you have blue minions to move yeah. that rock. You have a chaotic army of goblins, and most of their world oh. interactivity is being a U-Haul employee. They just <laughs> keep moving boulders. The more creative ideas suffer from a lack of mechanic variety. You send one minion to snatch a thing and then move it over. There's a breath of fresh air later when you use exploding bugs to play tremors with these giant sandworms. Oh, that's cool, actually kind of cool. You have to do it twice for each one. And apparently the desert is on Arrakis because there are so many of these worms Holy that it's hell. now repetitive again. There's so much How that feels like unnecessary. Are... Okay. There's a point where you're just padding for time and you can tell that they're padding for time with some of this. Yeah. Padding. It wasn't for story reasons either. I'm going to step back from the minions and talk more about the Overlord and being evil. Okay. The Overlord's combat is very simple. His melee attacks are a single button. Pull off three in a row and the last one is a power strike. Alright. This marks the end of his melee abilities. What? Really? You can spend golden minions to forge a sword or a mace, but that doesn't change. It affects the speed and damage of your button. Though, you can also upgrade those for different effects. Hmm. Same goes for armor, though it doesn't upgrade into each other, so the I second tier is more. completely worthless. The biggest change comes from getting a bigger horde, so the other upgrades don't matter as much. The most powerful weapon you have are the spells. You have four of them, and each one has three different levels. Okay. For example, you start with a fireball. That can be upgraded into a flamethrower. And cool. finally, the third level depends on your alignment. We should talk about that, huh? Uh. Like the previously mentioned fable, there's a morality system. You get corruption points when you're naughty. A key part of increasing it involves massacring innocents. You will need okay. to kill hundreds to reach the max level. Oh. The points are given in milestones. You can ransack every house in the city but one and you're fine. But if you ransack every house, then you're a bad man. That's An evil playthrough requires weird. a lot of going out of your way to do stuff. Very mundane stuff. You send the boys to kill people and sometimes they fight back, sometimes they just stand there and die. The townspeople respawn too, so it's just farming them. Most of the narrative uh. actions are default good anyways, so it's like freeing prisoners to murder them. When you're evil, you first get little spikes, then you become... <laughs> but that requires... Then you just basically look more like Sauron. Yeah. There's a significant amount of mindless farming to get there. Mm. Occasionally you'll come to a moral decision, which is based off of a deadly sin. Will I be a oh. glutton and take all this food for the minions, or give it back to the town? Will I save the elven women, or the big pile of money? Most of these boil down into what lever to pull or what to carry. The biggest choice is deciding mm. who will stay in your tower. It's either the Lady Rose or her sister, NVIDIA Physics Demo. They will NVIDIA give you Physics Demo! <laughs> oh, okay, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, because she has jizzle. <laughs> J jizzle jiggle. Physics. Jiggle Physics. God damn it, I can't speak today. Ugh. They also determine how you can customize your tower. Customize is a strong word since you have one choice per room and the only thing you can really choose is a banner. That this stinks. is all cosmetic. There's no gameplay oh, no. altering element to it. I, I'll be right back. I gotta use the restroom. All I'm right. still here. 
But yeah, I honestly expected there to be at least a bit more customization there. I guess that's not entirely true, since if you buy enough stuff, you unlock the sex scene. Sam, I think the time has come to tell you about the finer points of running an evil domain. Oh. Stop pushing! Now, oh, did I just it. hear that right? Did they just say sex scene? Yes, there's a sex scene. What you're not saying fuck? you're not gonna see anything. It's just that the whole you hear a bunch of sounds and the whole castle is rocking, as far as I can tell. I do wish yeah, there was an option implied. to take no mistress and just sit in the tower, getting oh really God. frustrated. <laughs> Maybe no funny. decorations and no scene, but you get a melee damage bonus or something. <laughs> what the fuck? The third level spells don't have much difference. It what the hell? Uh, I don't even. I mean, it was expected at this time period, but goddamn. It's mainly just one version will cause collateral damage, and the other one won't. I wouldn't call this game highly replayable, but it does add flavor to whatever play style you do go with. Hmm. More than anything, I'm surprised that this game has an aversion to you actually being an evil character. Yeah, that hobbits, is strange. But they're evil hobbits. You fight a unicorn, but it's an evil unicorn. <laughs> the boss characters are heroes who turn to a deadly sin and become evil. If you're playing as an evil character, you get a single new side mission where you kidnap women. By that I mean you carry women. They're all stripped down the tower and it's like, man, sure is a sleaze bag. But then you walk up to them and they go, They wouldn't let us dress like this in spree. Oh, it's empowering. You look like Sauron, but it's hard no. to impress anybody. Huh, so it's empowering for them. I guess for some cultures that would make sense. I mean, wearing less was a big faux pas for a hundred years and now we're... I'm not gonna go off on that, but yeah, that was a big faux pas for a lot of time. Even showing your ankles for women. How does that even happen? It's time to swindle those dirty elves. Hey, uh. boss. The gold is yours. We don't want it. Oh, oh. They, they don't want the gold. Slay those beasts and free us. Uh. It doesn't help that the main story is barely there at all. I do like the idea of corrupted heroes that just didn't care enough. And the overlord is taking over the world because they's a better leader than them but it doesn't seem like it's that was what they were originally going for so the final boss is revealed weird. about a level before you fight him and he's just called the wizard reveal your enemy right at the end except there is one scene where you do see the wizard there's a cutscene showing an optional dwarf area if you explore around and there he is he's just walking across is that the wrong model like was that supposed to be a dwarf model probably <laughs> there he what it's not mentioned at all, he's just there. Huh. The ending reveals that the Overlord used to be a hero like the bosses you defeated, but he has been made evil by the by the wizard. The heroes had abandoned him, so that would have given him a revenge angle and actually some more motivation for the story. That's, it sounds like they had a bunch of ideas, they just couldn't put any of them forth or didn't have the time to. Before you beat a boss, all of your minions cheer and then you just run up and whack him. It makes me think that maybe early in development they wanted to have it so you could forgive the hero or cleanse him of evil in some other way. There's mm. so little to draw from that it's hard to put in a phrase, but I've settled on missing punchline. There are seven. Yeah. It just feels like there's a lot of work that they could have could have been done if they had more time. Setups for jokes. Th then again, that's a story for a lot of in uh, a lot of studios, isn't it? Jokes and setups for characters, but there's just no payoff. There's yeah. one part where you go into a town of stereotypical British peasantry, and then their mayor walks out, and it's a black American guy. He says, "Who are you?" Thank you, Ruby. How you been? Double raid, yeah. Sorry, it's Thank like you. Thank you for the follow, Goblin Number One. <laughs> character, but this is the last you ever see of him. Hmm. The villains show up, and then they're gone as quickly as they came. Hello, the hello. Feels padded out, but for those who don't know me, I am Mechwolf, a Mechpie VTuber that is also a wolf. Though this is not my f my usual form, but right now I am free, the evil version. That I won't go into the lore right now because that'll take too much time right now. We're watching this video. Hello. At the same time, the story feels unfinished. You yeah. do get some different endings based on what you do, but at the end, the game just felt like an anomaly. The game looks like it should have a lot more character than it actually does. When I first beat this, I wasn't going to recommend it. Or at least say that if you do play it, you probably won't want to finish it. Then I went mm -hmm. ahead and played the expansion content. That's the expansion. Oh! 
What the heck? Is that a reaper playing his scythe like a guitar? <laughs> oh my god. No, they're all playing it like their guitar. Oh. God damn. So this is the expansion, huh? They're playing rock and roll, rock and roll. Also, how did your Elden Ring game go? I hope yeah, it was well. Yeah, this was different. The yeah, this is very takes different. Place in mere dimension hell worlds of the main campaign. Oh, the levels are much more fantastical, and there's a lot of room for creativity. Cool. Even though all the levels need to look like hell, they still felt distinct from each other. That's they nice. They ended up being better parodies of the main game's levels. The bosses are back, but rather than fighting them, they're involved with puzzles to complete the level. Ah. Oh yeah, the expansion has actual puzzles now. There's variety. The puzzles also feel more fun and meaningful than before. They're related mm. to the theme or the plot of the level instead of just moving a rock over. There's one where you have to do chores for nightmare ah, women well, and they ride men around like steeds. You organize a massive raid to bring them back to the surface, and then it turns out that they were there because all the men in town were following a succubus, which ah. ties directly into the main game. You can play this whole thing alongside the main campaign, so if you've eaten area, you unlock the abyss area and you can cool. beat that right after. Wait, what? Oh, I'm glad to hear that it went okay, but yeah. Didn't quite, you know, yeah, that will My happen with the boss. The giant stage that tortures elves forever. What? Naturally, they're just being forced to watch a play making fun of them. The entire stage <laughs> is segregated so the elves can't go on one side. The lighting changes for different acts while the play is going on in the background. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, he has a thing against elves, specifically fantasy elves. I'm not sure why. You hear the abyss god getting mad when you disrupt his play. The dwarves attack Evernight Forest. Dwarves! <laughs> Even the carry puzzles have been adjusted so that usually the carried object will follow you instead of going to a point. It gives nice. you more feeling of control compared to feeling like an escort mission. Even the escort missions now have attacks on them. It's a proper fight instead of busy work. Just like There's Fable. more thinking required, but at the same time it understands that combat is mainly you throwing your minions at the problem. Yeah, it feels like they learned from what they saw people do and actually adapted. So now you fight tons That's of enemies, nice. or dangerous enemies. There's no morality system, but there are jokes. Which is probably how it should have been from the start. Yeah. There are unique weapons that can't be upgraded, so you don't need to farm. The main plot is still light, but now it has build-up and foreshadowing. There's something going on. Instead of just running into the final boss, you have to fight your way towards him. It's cool. not a great boss fight, but it's the best in the game by far. He even gets some low-budget Metal Gear Rising music. Huh? Do you know oh. what it's like to be forgotten, sub-creature? Once my name was spoken in whispers. It brought uh. to this land. Now that petulant goddess wishes my name lost in the what do you look like? time. What do you look like? No more. Nice rock and roll. Oh. Awaken their nightmares, their darkest memories. Giant centipede they monster. They will remember me, and they will remember what they feared. It seems to be an elder god or demon lord that hates that he is forgotten. It's a tremendous difference. I can only wish that the main game had been more like this. The main game had I a ton of problems, why. and here, they were starting to figure them out. I mm -hmm. still can't recommend the main game standalone, but if you get it with the expansion, it might be worth your I time. I wonder if the second the game's any better. The new levels make the entire experience much more digestible. You can get it on GOG or Steam, though this is one of those times where I'll recommend GOG over Steam. For whatever reason, the expansion isn't bundled. That means Weird. if you buy Raising Hell on Steam, you also have to buy and install the original Overlord game separately, which is a waste of money and pointless. Weird. With Overlord behind me, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks mm. to everyone helping me out. This came out later than planned since I did a segment mm. for Race of X Metro 2033 video. So I've got some question catching up to do. Have mm. you thought of casually streaming stuff you're playing or recording for? I've thought about it, but I lately feel behind on stuff, so I'm trying to catch up before I yeah, do something like that. that. If I can I'm making a video on something, it's highly unlikely I would stream it if it's new to me. Streaming a game, especially one that's story heavy, is kind of like texting during a movie. Might do mm. a Total War campaign sometime though. Have you looked yep. at other video distribution methods? I just saw that. He was, there was where several of, I think the, so of the leaders in Total War Hammer. Well, I have, but nothing is really viable right now. I do keep everything backed up now and people are free to download whatever. Druid's review when? Hopefully never, it can just stare at me. <laughs> You've been doing videos on mixed games. Are you willing to do one about a? I need to watch that one with Fable. I'm pretty positive. What I know, I it's uh, they are easy targets, so crazy. I find that making a video for them usually isn't as engaging. I like it more when they're weird, bad compared to just non-functional or terrible. Huh? Maybe there will be a Druid's video. Halligan, 
Where are my scissors? I've no well, idea. I thought they were on your desk just a minute ago. Don't lie to me, Halligan. I know you've got them. Has he been and playing this? What was that business with the chief all about? I really don't know what you're talking about. Look forward to that nightmare. I'll see you next time. Well then. I pressed the wrong thing. Uh, don't look over here. I definitely didn't screw up. Uh, thank you all so much. And we'll see you guys next time. Why is there a bird outside my window? Thank you all so much.